Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Around 10.30 at night, look for the orange-colored red giant star Antares in Scorpius towards the south. The body of the scorpion sits above this bright star and is punctuated by three similarly bright stars. Acrab at the top, Juba in the middle, and Pi Scorpii on the bottom. Let's go globular hunting first, shall we? Look at the middle star, Juba. Though appearing single, this is an interesting set of four stars, the largest and brightest one having undergone a bit of variability in the last 10 years or so, though recently it's settled down to around second magnitude. Follow a line from that star to Antares, a star that was likely born at a similar time as Juba, but has evolved more quickly into a red giant. Now extend that line out, the same distance, going in the opposite direction. So what's here? Well, for starters, this is a wonderfully dense region of the Milky Way, as we're looking in towards the central region of our galaxy. But right here, we should be able to use a red dot finder, or magnified finder scope, to locate a globular cluster at this spot, Messier 62. Charles Messier initially discovered this object in 1771, but failed to note its position until finding it again in 1779. It has a moderately bright overall appearance with a bright core. At a respectable 14 arc minutes across, this cluster likely spans about 100 light years across in space. For amateurs, most telescopes will see about one and a half arc minutes of a core and approximately six to eight arc minutes of stars outside that area. Smaller scopes will show it as a hazy region, while larger ones should easily resolve the brighter cluster members. A journey onwards to an open cluster in a moment. And now this week's dark sky fact. Summer is the perfect time to swap out old, poorly shielded lights for new ones. Check out the selection of dark sky friendly lighting at Lowe's home improvement stores in the US, or look on darksky.org for websites where you can purchase these starlight and sleep enhancing fixtures. Let's back up a bit. This time draw a line from Juba through Antares and on to the 1.8 magnitude Caus Australis in the lower right side of the teapot asterism in Sagittarius. The span of distance from Antares over to Caus Australis is just about 25 degrees, so you can measure that distance by holding up your hand at arm's length like this. Now imagine splitting that line into thirds. This is not quite as easy as splitting it in half, but you can also estimate the approximately 8 degrees distance by holding up four fingers together like this. Our first hop is the 8 degrees from Antares, so Messier 62 right here. But if we come back from the other direction, from Caus Australis back towards Antares, and stop just a little further out, more like a fist width of around 10 degrees, we find another object, the open cluster of Messier 6, sometimes known as the Butterfly Cluster. This cluster does indeed have a butterfly shape to it. Check out the 7th through 9th magnitude stars that have two somewhat symmetrical sides, with a fairly well-defined body and a bit of imagination, two antennae that rise up off the head of the butterfly. With larger scopes, stars down to 12th and 13th magnitude make this cluster a real treat. At 25 arc minutes across, low to medium low magnification is best for this 1600 light years distant cluster of stars. At that distance and angular diameter, the cluster covers about 12 light years of space. And one last thing to look for, up from M6, just underneath this 4.5 magnitude star by about one degree, is the center of our Milky Way galaxy, right at the core. Did you like this video? Please consider sharing these videos with others interested in the night sky, so we can educate about what can be seen and how to reduce light pollution. If you'd like more videos like this, you can find recent episodes at eyesinthesky.com in the videos tab and from the drop down menu, or for last week's video about the ring nebula, click on the annotation here. If you're totally new to this, or know someone who is, check out the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Telescopes and Amateur Astronomy from the blog drop down menu. You'll be up to speed in about an hour. And be sure to subscribe, follow, and like on social media sites. Eyes on the Sky is more than just weekly videos. Thanks for watching. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies.